Good morning. Welcome back. Let's chat about this fine specimen of an orchid. I do not do long intros, so let's get into it. This one is my terminal spike rescue in water culture. She started full and luscious, but due to a repot with, I'm assuming, um, rotten bark media, which caused root rot and mold and that encompassed um, my issue with fungus gnats not fun at all um, a terminal spike onto that is one that that comes in through the crown rather than um, through a leaf but don't quote me see how this spike was coming out the side of the leaf it was growing a new root there too. I was a brand spanking new beginner grower when I got this one and I was jumping for joy when I saw these roots poke out and um, it was a bunch of others. Um, there was a, a new leaf, Lesai. As you can see I lost quite a few leaves um, by the time I got her out of the bark and put her into water culture Gradually, she was still losing leaves, and where the roots rotted, this left me with a long, dead stem, kind of looking like a skeleton. It's at a point where the stem and the stringy root both are dead, as I stated before. This is just a breeding ground for bacteria or mold to build up, and generally it's pretty ugly, and we don't want our orchids looking ugly. Now I was part of the people that subscribe to the school of thought that believes the air air quotes stringy the stringy part where the vellum has been stripped stripped away due to rot are still viable. In theory the vellum is the sponge and the string stringy part is a sort of straw that drinks up water to hydrate the orchid. But now clearly the stringy part along with the stem is dried up and not, there's no possible way for moisture, water to get up through, um, up through there. Here I am going to utilize a wooden stake clipped to the old spike. It seemed to give me the most leverage. I am not spraying the air roots with peroxide. I'm using foliar feed, which is seaweed extract diluted in rainwater. It has worked wonders for me. Um, I had so much root growth as soon as I started spraying them down, well, spraying the leaves, well, spritzing the whole thing. And then my inverted orchid, I would um, spritz directly on it because it was down, I mean, it was downward, you know, facing. So of course the, the water is not going to get into the crown, I guess, or whatever. And yeah, <clears throat> I had the most success with that. In my previous video, repotting a, a rescue orchid from water culture to moss, I will link that one in the description box down below. I was trying the same thing Again, it didn't work, but that's not to say it can't work for someone else. I recorded these videos all at one time and then just sat back to watch which ones would be successful. These stems were way too susceptible to mold. I am using New Zealand's Fagna Moss laid over packing peanuts. Make sure they are the ones that aren't that don't break down. Um, I made that mistake with the bark mix I repotted uh, this one with. The, the peanuts, the, the peanuts that don't break down allow for more airflow. I've seen this method done for other orchids besides Phalaenopsis. Now I have seen orchids potted with moss with no drainage holes. Yes, no drainage holes. Um, my orchid arrangement and and I know this because 
my orchid arrange well me personally i have this i have this uh this kind of orchid um, i bought in uh at fresh market market and um that one does not have drainage what i do for that one is pour out the excess water um, it's crazy because those two are the ones because it's, it's a bamboo and two orchids potted in the same uh, pot <laughs> and they are the ones that have thrived the most they have the, the most um, air roots and they are very long with uh, green tips I mean they are my, they are my best or most growing orchids. I struggled quite a bit to stabilize the stake in this plastic solo cup. I didn't have a pot that was what I thought to be small enough yet big enough. Um, the Goldilocks rule. I've read that orchids prefer to be under potted. You would think they want would want more room to grow but that's just not the case at least not for phalaenopsis i'm not sure about other kinds of orchids their roots want to be more compacted um, i hope i'm using the correct terminology this solo cup seemed to be a little too thin and too short again work with what you got and there you have it folks one of my unsuccessful experiments um, you win some you lose some uh, that's just how it goes on to the next um, if you've made it this far into the video thank you so so much for listening to me babble I got some bonus contact uh, content if you care my new symbidium my new symbidium baby or seedling I bought this beauty from the Orchid Gallery here in North Carolina. Check out my videos, um, part one and two, where I tour uh, the greenhouse. This is my second designer orchid. I call it, um, you know, like, like animals. Uh, they're bred a certain way to look a certain way. Next um, to my Sogo Vivian, this girl is Sarah Jean Ice Cascade. Here's what it looks like as a two inch um, growth seedling size, which I think I got a little bit smaller. There was one suitable and um, the grower told me it, would, it wouldn't bloom for about two to three years. I'm assuming at about three suitable pseudobulbs, it'll be near blooming. I've got a pseudobulb and another one starting to grow. I wasn't sure what that was at first, but yeah, that's her. And this will be what she looks like all grown up. And I don't know if I should do, an, well, I'm going to do another separate video all about this um, Sarah Jean Ice Cascade um, because it's really come a long way. And it was touch and go because my daughter <laughs> thought that it was just the coolest to um that it was some sort of new toy and she was like fascinated by it and she kept tossing it around so that's why it's at an angle kind of twisted up and yeah um it's in moss i added a little bit of sphagnum moss new zealand sphagnum moss um due to her arranging it and that's it i hope you guys enjoyed my video and i will be back for more i'll talk to you guys later